not every element follows the octet rule, so there's two classes of exceptions. One is fewer than eight electrons, and the one element that you have to remember that follows that is boron. So for example, in boron trichloride, by symmetry, the three chlorines should be on the outside and the boron in the center. Boron has three valence electrons. Each one of the chlorines has seven, so that's 24 electrons. Start by connecting terminal to central and then satisfy terminal. And when we do that, that's eight, 16, 24 electrons. Now we could try to satisfy the boron by moving non-bonding electrons and making a multiple bond like we saw with the carbon dioxide. However, we're going to see later on that that Lewis structure doesn't match the reality, that this is a much better picture. And when we do formal charges, we'll be able to calculate why that is. But boron is the one exception that would exist like this with less than eight. It only has six electrons around it. However, there are much more exceptions that work the opposite way, which is more than eight electrons. Possibly any nonmetal that's in row three or below is capable of having this, what's called an expanded octet. And row three and below, those elements are large enough to handle the great number of electrons that would cause electrons to be close to other electrons leading to a lot of repulsion if we try to do this with a smaller element such as one in row two. So when we draw the Lewis structure for ICl4 with a negative one charge, we're going to start by putting the iodine in the center, four chlorines on the outside, number of valence electrons, Iodine has seven, each chlorine has seven, and then the negative one charge, we have to add one electron, so that's going to be a total of 36 valence electrons. When we connect chlorine to the iodine, that uses up eight, and then each chlorine needs three more pairs of two to satisfy the octet rule. And this is a total of 32 electrons in this picture. So we still have four electrons left. Those have to go on the central atom, and you have to put them in pairs. Electrons are always in pairs, whether they're non-bonding pairs or bonding pairs. We're not going to have four separate electrons. They're always going to go in pairs like this. So this iodine has two, four, six, eight bonding electrons and four non-bonding electrons. That's a total of 12 electrons around it, but iodine is large enough to handle that expanded octet.